happy along the trip. Amen. Can I get a witness in the house today? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for everyone that's here, God, today. Thank you, dear Father, for your grace and your mercy. God, and Lord, for the people of God that are here to worship you in spirit and in truth. And the ones that, are, that could not be here that's watching us, God, this morning. God, that I pray that you'd bless them, touch their bodies and their minds. Father, I pray, God, that you touch their spirit. Now, Father, I pray, God, that you touch everyone that's under the sound of my voice, God, today. Father, I pray, God, that the precious blood of Jesus, God, would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, I pray, Father, that there'd be one here lost, I pray. Oh, God, that you'd save them. God, they come today empty. God, I pray, Father, that you'd feel them and thrill their soul. Wash them. All of their sin away, God, today. And the ones, God, that may be struggling along the way, God, they're, they know down in their soul, God, that they're saved and on their way to heaven. But, God, they're struggling with issues. God, in just this moment of time, God, that you'd give them that peace that they need, that to illuminate their mind, cleanse their mind, clear their mind. God, that you'd put joy down in their soul for just a few moments. Father, I pray, God, for the preaching hour and the songs of Zion. God, that it would stir us one more time this side of heaven. And Father, we'll love you and thank you for all that you do. In Christ's name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. You may be, give the Lord praise all over the house. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord.
few that have uh, asked for the church to pray over them and to be anointed. And so those of you that uh, want to be involved in that, come on. You go ahead and make your way up this way. Um, best you can. Come on, Bill. There you go. You come too. There you go. Come on. If uh, Tommy, if you wanted to do that, we can, we can do that as well. You need to be anointed this morning as well. All right. <clears throat> All of you that can and will, we're going to come and pray around these and believe the Lord with them, alongside of them.
Thank you. 
unworthy this morning. Ronnie uh, Hawkins, tell me about what the Lord's done for you. Ronnie Hawkins, that's you. Start that 
just a few verses here beginning at verse number 26 Luke chapter 23 and verse number 26 I believe this is the message for the hour and the reason that I believe that is I believe that God's speaking to somebody over the Old Testament the Bible said this I set before you life and death choose life I set before you blessing and a curse. There are some that will leave this room and this building today blessed. There are some that will leave this room and this building today with life everlasting. But sadly, there may be some that today choose to go your own way choose to do your own thing the Bible says here in Luke chapter 23 and verse number 26 and as they led him away they laid hold on Simon a Cyrenian coming out of the country and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus now get in your mind the scene of what's happening Jesus is being led out to be crucified on the hill of Golgotha, on the hill of Calvary. And he has been beaten. He has been bloodied. He has been uh, 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 treated as no man should be treated and would be treated. The book, book of uh, Psalm in verse, or chapter 22 
said that, behold, I looked and gazed, and I could he could see his own bones as he was, laid, and was on the cross. They put the beard from his face. They put the uh, crown of thorns down on his head, and he's led out. And under the weight of all of that, his body just could not carry that weight. And they grab a man who just happened to be there because it was Passover, because he had to come to Jerusalem. He, they grabbed Simon and they laid the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. The cross, the, the, the part that would go across his shoulders. He was carrying that up the hill, up the Via Della Rosa. And as he travels there and they place that on him, he don't know what's going on. He's walked into the scene now, and all of a sudden there's a riot in the city. All of a sudden there's this scene that's going on and they say, you carry his cross. And he goes up the hill of Golgotha carrying the weight of that cross. And as he gets there, of course we know that they Crucify the Lord. The Bible says in verse number 32, and there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, they were they there they crucified him. And the malefactors, one on the right and the other on the left, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding. And the rulers also that derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him coming to him and offering him vinegar and saying, if thou be king of the Jews, save thyself. Verse 39 said, and one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him saying, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answered rebuking him, or rebuked him, saying, dost not thou fear God? seeing thou art in the same condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest thy kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Verily, I say unto you, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. What a tremendous truth. Years ago, I think it was about 15 years ago, may have been longer, there was a, a string of crime that was going on and even murder in this area from Gaffney up through this area. Some of you may remember that. And they found the killer over in Spencer Mountain, on Spencer Mountain Road. And when they did, I immediately knew that house. I spent most of my childhood playing at that house. And they had found the killer with two of the people I grew up playing at that house with. I got three stitches right here in my chin from busting my chin open at that house. Playing hide and go seek and uh, in the woods First outhouse I ever saw. And when I saw that, oh, it struck me. I know for a 
his people. Thanks be to God, they were just accessories to what was going on. They had not committed the crime themselves. But God spoke to me and I could not help but think of this. It could have been me. It could have well been me. The saying goes, but for the grace of God, there go I. We find the story and the scene where Jesus has took up the cross. And the Bible said he set his face as a flint toward Jerusalem. He had one goal. He had one thing in mind. I'm going to that cross. I will bleed and I will die. I will pay my life as a sacrifice for sin because in three days you might tear this temple down, but in three days I'll raise it up again. In three days I'm getting up victorious over death, hell, and grave. And as he marches to Calvary, somebody is placed in the way. In verse 26, they led him away and laid a Hold upon Simon, a Cyrenian came coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross that he may bear it after Jesus. It could have been me, it could have been you, it could have been us that received the penalty that he got. He was crucified. And the Bible said in Galatians chapter number four. That in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, born of a woman. And the reason that, that that's so important is that God orchestrated all of this and put it all together. And the Romans are the ones that instituted. And the Romans are the ones who invented uh, the, 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 uh, the crucifixion. How that they would kill someone by crucifying them. The Bible said, cursed is every man to hang upon a tree. And the Bible said he would become a curse for us. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything that he should. I have I suffered the penalty. You did it, and I did it. All of we are sin, all of our mess was laid on him. That it could have been you. It could have been me that had to pay the price, had to pay the penalty for our sins. But Jesus loved us enough. The Bible said in the book of Revelation, that John wept because no man was found worthy to open the, uh, the book and the seals. But then the Bible says, but there stood a lamb as it had been slain from the foundation of the earth. There was one that would take your sin and my sin. You say, preacher, why are you telling us this? I, 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 we're, we're pretty good people. I, preacher, why are you telling me this? I live in America. I'm, I'm in the Bible Bill. I'm sitting on a pew this morning. I know this, that the devil has a way of tricking people and lying to people. And you might know something about God here, but you don't know him here. And you may fly to miss heaven by 18 inches. You may die and go to a devil's hell. Matthew chapter number 7 tells us that there were many that day that did many wonderful works. And Jesus said, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. He didn't say he forgot about them. He didn't say you used to do right, now you're doing wrong. I never knew those are the words of the Lord Jesus. There are some folk that have been duped. You've been sold, sold a bill of goods. You've been told a lie. I'm not here to try to make you doubt today, but what I'm here to try to tell you and preach to you is the truth. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. David said, I create a clean heart in me, O God. David said, search me, O God. Would we be honest enough to say, God, search me? Am I truly 
born again. It could have been me that received his penalty. Penalty. It could have been me that rejected his purchase. Look in verse number 39. And one of the malefactors which were hanged, I railed on him saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answered, rebuked him, saying, Dost thou not fear God? Or dost not thou fear God? Seeing thou art in the same condemnation. There was a sinner on one side and a sinner on the other side. Both of them were condemned. Both of them were to die. Both of them were going to go out into eternity in just a few moments. And one, all he could do is shake his fist at God. If you are who you say. See, some of us say, well, I wouldn't do that, would we not? God, if you love me, God, if you're real, then why'd you let this happen to me? Why did I have to go through this? I heard somebody say one time, why do bad things happen to good people? And someone else answered, they don't. It only happened one time. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. He said, Preacher, I don't deserve it. Well, we might not, we might not feel like we do. But the weight of sin is crushing us. And if God does not deal with that sin, he is an unjust God. John, God didn't send his only begotten son so I could sing happy songs on Sunday morning. And clap and wear a tie and carry a King James Bible. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that's great. But the reason his son came is because I was an affront to a holy God, to a thrice holy God. Because everything in me went against him. And by his very nature, I was under the wrath and condemnation of God. And I shook my fist in his face, and you did. There are times you may have been raised on a church pew. You may have been raised around shouting. You may have been raised around singing. You may have been raised, I mean, when they wore their dresses all the way to the ground, uh, where their daddy wore a white shirt buttoned to the neck. You, uh, I mean, every standard that you could have had, you may have held. But you know there are people that never wore, wore a pair of pants in their life that are burning in hell right now because your standards ain't going to get you there your goodness will not get you there it takes the blood of Jesus to get you out of heaven and so here's this man I'm telling you it could have been you he said if you are who you say you are why don't you get down not realizing Peter doesn't talk or Jesus doesn't talk to Peter about this and he told Peter get thee behind me Satan yeah. Yeah. anybody that was standing between him and the cross and the mission that he has put for here he looked at as doing Satan's work and that man was saying get down if he didn't die we'd never have a chance to live he had to die. The sacrifice had to die so that we could live. It could have been you and I, and it may be you and I. It may be some who have rejected the Lord. Well, I'm a pretty good person. I give an altar plate, altar, altar plates. I've been baptized. I joined the church. I signed up to serve. Wonderful. Thank God for it. But if you've never been saved, if you've never been washed in the blood, if you've never been redeemed, you'll die and go to the devil's hell. Rejecting the Lord. Here's the last one. Look in verse number 42. 
And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, truly, verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. It could be you that is rewarded with his promise. April 2nd, 1989, I've told it a hundred times and I'll tell it again. I was on my way home from church on that Easter Sunday night. I knew a little bit about God. Had a little Gideon New Testament that I'd gotten in Bible school in our neighborhood. We had a family altar Bible in our home. I had made deals with God. God, if you'll bring daddy home safe, then I'll believe you're real. I'll believe, I'll believe in you, I'll live for you. Only to fail him miserably. Time and time again. But I was 13, going on 14 years old. Went to church. Started hearing about Jesus coming back. Started hearing about Jesus, that he would save you. That we had to be saved. There, that church was different than how we do. They didn't have a, an invitation per se where someone gave the plan of salvation at the end. And I didn't, I never moved. But I was under conviction. What is conviction, preacher? That might be what you're feeling right now. Where God is drawing you. God is telling you what that preacher is telling you is right. What that Bible says is right. And you need Christ. You need the blood applied to your heart and applied to your life. I was on my way home. My aunt and uncle on the front seat. My brother and I are in the back seat. 1987 Mazda 323. Down at the cruiser's turnaround. About the time we got there, they were talking to us and said, Would you like to pray and ask the Lord to be your Savior? One of them was driving, the other one was talking to. They didn't even stop on the side of the road. But I remember where I was. I still, I, I, in my mind's eye, I can still see the gas station that ain't even there no more sitting over there and see those three crosses in front of that Presbyterian church. I bowed my head, a sinner condemned, and I prayed the best I could. And when I opened my eyes, something happened. Something changed. I remember I got out, and it was a few miles before we could get home. And the sun was going down by the time we got home. I remember my uncle came around. My uncle, y'all met him before. He's here before. He came around. He hugged me up real big. And I remember I, all of that in my mind's eye. I remember all of a sudden everything seemed different. Everything seemed changed. I'm glad bless his holy name that I received the promise of God. I received what God had for me. I received Christ. That's 35 years ago. And he ain't done me nothing but good. He's always been faithful. Even and especially when I wasn't. He was faithful to me. With heads bowed and eyes closed, right there where you are, I want you to stand. Just stand. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. No one's looking around. If you're here today and you're saved by the grace of God and you know it, I want you to throw that hand up in there. Preacher, I'm saved and I know I am. Hallelujah. A whole lot of hands are up in there. You can put it back down. Maybe I didn't look to so see who did or who didn't. Maybe you could not raise your hand. And 
right now, God's telling you, I'm talking to you. This might be your last chance. This may be your last opportunity. It could be you today. With heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're not 100% sure that you're ready to meet Christ, and you know that God is your Savior, I want you to slip that hand up in the air. Thank you. Thank you. Are there others? There's more. I saw at least three hands. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Maybe you're here today and say, Preacher, I do believe I'm saved. I can remember a time that Jesus changed my life, but truthfully and honestly, my relationship's not where it needs to be with the Lord right now. Would we be honest enough to throw our hands up? Preacher, would you help me pray? We see those. We see those. We see those. Thank you for your honesty. Here's what I'm going to do. If you're saved and you know the Lord, I want you to come and thank the Lord for what he's done for you. If you're saved, I want you to come and pray for those that God's dealing with right now. We're going to talk to you in just a moment. My Christians are praying. Saints are praying. Do, do battle on behalf of others. You raised your hand said, Preacher, I, I believe I'm saved, but I'm not where I need to be in my relationship with Christ. Here we come. Come on. Come on. I want to be closer. I need to be closer to God than I am right now, preacher. Come on. Don't you dare leave like you came. God wants to change you. God wants to help you. Here we come. Come on. Don't let anybody or anything keep you from getting close to God. While these are praying, you're here today and say, Preacher, I raised my hand, or maybe you didn't. I'm not 100% sure about this thing of salvation. I do not know that heaven will be my home. With heads bowed and eyes closed, if you don't know the Lord, if you're not sure about your salvation, which you need to be, God's speaking to your heart right now. I'm going to pray a prayer. And if it's just my words, it will not do any good. But if you'll pray this prayer, and they're the words that God, from your lips to God's ear, God will hear and answer your prayer. Pray with me. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Come into my heart. Change me. Wash me. Make me new. Make me whole. Thank you, Jesus, that you love me. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. Thank you, Jesus. For saving me. Hands are bowed, eyes are closed. Preacher, the best I know how, I, pr I pray and I ask the Lord to be my Savior just now. Is there somebody like that? Preacher, here's my hand. I called out on the Lord. Thank you. Is there somebody else? Preacher, I prayed and asked the Lord to be my Savior. And I believe this morning that He has saved me. And I'm not ashamed of it. Here's my hand. There's another. Hallelujah. Are there others? Preacher, here's my hand. I don't believe that God changed my message for no reason. I already know of two. 
are there more? Preacher, I gotta go home and fix this. And preacher, if I if I make that kind of commitment, then somebody's gonna be mad. God help. We're talking about eternity. Jesus can fix all the other stuff while he's dealing with you. Do, do business with him now. Jesus, here's my hand. I'm not ashamed. I call out on you as my Lord and my Savior. I'm going to get a couple guys, men, that have some Bibles. your heart. The Lord's dealt with your life. God's speaking to you right now. With hands bowed and eyes closed. Here I come. Come on. Come on. Have a look. Robert, slip over here. Zachary, take your Bible. You and Robert deal with it. There, he's dealing with him. Hallelujah. Robert, take the lead right there. Somebody else. Maybe you raised your hand and you didn't. I need Christ. I 
want you in your home like this. Come on. Come on. God loves you so much. He had one son and he was precious. He was perfect. He's priceless. And he gave that son for you. He will receive you as a son of God right now. While God's drawing, while God's dealing, preacher, here I come. If there's somebody beside you, they'll move. Stand up. Come on. God can change your life and will change your life even right now. God 
you know you're saved. Oh, well, it might be that you know, you just need to have the faith to take the step that God's telling you to take. I need to make this right in my life. I need to finally surrender and say, God, if you want me on the mission field, I go on the mission field. If you want me to preach, I'll preach. If you want me to, you fill in the blank because the Holy Ghost already has, then I will. There's somebody else. God, I give up. I'm tired of kicking against the prince like Paul. God, I'll just go with you. church today. I thank the Lord for speaking to us. Thank God for saving souls. You say, preacher, those people already came to church. There's a whole whole lot of people that sit in church every Sunday. Believe it or not. Thanks be to God for the people that are here and listen. Did you want to say something, Sean? All, all my life, I've grown up in, in the faith. I was saved. I, I was saved at a really young age. I made a lot of mistakes over the course of my life. When you get saved young, and you haven't had a chance to make a lot of mistakes in life, you can be tempted. The enemy in the flesh can tempt you to believe. Maybe you didn't really need Jesus to die on the cross. Maybe that wasn't really necessary for you. Maybe for so many people in the world, but not necessarily for you. But then you live long enough and you make enough mistakes. And you live long enough and you start to make willful mistakes. Yeah. And then one day you read the Bible and it hits you. You really do deserve to go to hell. Yeah. And if you were your own God, you really would send you to heaven. You would send yourself to hell. And then you peep and you hear what Jesus did on the cross for us. Seek his own. His own bone. And we live in a society that constantly tries to compare levels of good. More good than this person, less good than that person, more evil, or less evil than there's no competition like that. You can't get into heaven on your sins and evil deeds. And you can't get into heaven on your good works. The rich young ruler tried that, and it didn't work. Nicodemus had questions, it won't work. It's either the blood or it's not going to happen. Amen. So, so if you're waiting and you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm too sinful for God to forgive me and save me. Many sins, many mistakes. Or let me just get enough things right in my life. Let me stop these habits and those habits and stop cursing and stop making this mistake and that mistake. And then I'll go up and get saved. Or I'll ask the Lord to save me. You might end up dying and going to hell. Because you don't know when it, when you'll leave. You don't know if it'll be a car wreck, a straight bullet, a heart attack. Everyone, everyone believes they'll be here this time next year. It's, 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 yeah. it's almost just a part of, of how we are as human beings. We believe we'll be here. Somebody else might not be here next Christmas, but we'll be here. 
Somebody else might not be here next Easter for food. But the truth is we don't know. And you don't have to be a, a bad person to not be here next year. It just means that the Lord is calling you home. If you don't know for certain that if you walk out of this door today and get hit by a car and die, if you don't know beyond the shadow of infinity that you will be in heaven because of the Lord Jesus Christ who has saved you on the cross of his blood, I beg you. Whether it be today or a day in the future, or as fast as you can, get on your knees, humble yourself, ask him to search your heart and save you. Because he's willing to do it. It's a free gift. He loves you. It's unconditional love. You don't have to plead. You don't have to beg. You don't have to just feel like dirt. You can just admit you're wrong, a sinner. You've committed sin against him. You don't want to burn in hell. You're afraid of it. I was afraid of it. I've been afraid of it. I've been terrified of it. And if you're not terrified, and if you've never had a moment in your life where you've been terrified of hell or the lake of fire, then you need to hear the gospel for the first time. Because it's good news, but it's good news saving you from bad news. And that bad news is really real, and it's really bad, and people are in hell right now. And you don't have to be one of them. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Yes. Please humble yourself. Yes. yes. You're, not, you're not asking someone to save you who doesn't want to save you. You're asking someone to save you who died to try to save you. Amen. Amen. Who cried to save you. Who gave his only child, holy child, Jesus, to save you. So why not say yes? Why not choose life? Why not say thank you, Lord, and receive his loving kindness? It's a free gift of God. You don't have to die and go to hell. It's unnecessary. It's the Lord's desire that people go to heaven. And I'll say this last thing. The Bible says there'll be a lot of people who think they're very self-righteous and have righteousness in themselves. And they're not going to get in. Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we raise the dead in your name? Did we do this miracle and that miracle in your name? I never knew. And the scriptures say the king sent his servants out into the highways and the byways and said the people who were invited didn't come. So I ask everyone who's willing to come to come the prostitute, the pimp, the liar, the child molester, the rapist, the serial killer it doesn't matter who it was. If that person is willing to repent of their sin, acknowledge their sin is sin. Come to me as the Lord and Savior and turn from their sin and be saved. As crazy it may sound to the flesh, the Lord is willing to save every single person. No matter how wicked we think they are, or how righteous we think they are, He will save every single person. He will come to and to to save them. And I beg you, don't let self false self righteousness be a chain that pulls you straight to hell. Just let it go. Just come forward, let it go, and just let him save you. Let him love you. Just let him love you. Just let him save you and love you. Salvation. Today is the day of salvation. If you hear his voice today, don't harden your heart. Amen. Don't take another chance to say, will I go to bed and wake up and have one more chance? Will I go to bed tonight and wake up and have one more chance? You might not. You might not. Be sure. Be sure. Be sure. Be certain. And if you're not certain... If you feel humiliated, if you feel embarrassed, if you feel ashamed, or, man, I've known these scriptures all my life, how can I be still be unsure? Well, better to be 100% sure right. than have 90% or even 50% of doubt. That's right. right. I kept quoting this right. Be sure that you know that you know that you know. And when he's, he's questioning it, he's, he was saying, he, was, he knows the Bible more than I did, by far. But... Do you know that you know that you know? Yes. And if there's any doubt there, any, if there's something that goes, well, I thought I knew, but uh, no, do it. It's not, it don't cost you anything. It costs your humility. That's it. Right. For you to come up and just surrender to him and just say, this is it, God. I give up. I can't do this on my own. I can't do this without you. Yeah. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm going to be in your kingdom when this is all said and done. Amen. Amen. And, do it. Just, just give up. Amen. Go ahead. I think you gave us the meat, and you gave us the potatoes, uh -huh. and I think Brother Charles just gave us some gravy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. All he needs is a microphone and an organ. Zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> Silver, 
for being brave and, and going up and opening the door for all of us. My wife got saved, I think she was about 14, 13, somewhere, 15, somewhere in there. She had been raised in church, had made a profession as a child. And she was at a youth meeting that she didn't even want to go to. <clears throat> you know, sometimes it's good for parents to make your kids think they make them be in church. Amen. Yes. Yes. We'll run all over the country to get them to the ball game and to the, oh, Lord, help me, I ain't no time for that. But the preacher stood up that night at the end of the service and said, if you're only 99% sure that you're saved, you might be 100% lost. And God pricked her home. She said, I'm in a profession, but that's all it was. I had no position. God saved her that night. And I share that to say one more time, I'm, I am not in the business of trying to make people doubt it. But you can have a go-so. From this friendly, I know that I know that I know that I know. If, if the, the God of glory, as big as he is, ever moves in, you'll know it. Yes, I know. Yes. Just bow your head before we go. Are you 100% sure? Or, preacher, I'm not. There's some doubt in my heart. There's some doubt in my life. I don't know. I won't come to you. I will embarrass you. But I will pray for you. Preacher, here's my hand. Would you pray for me? I want to know. I need to know that I'm saved. Please pray for me. Thank you. Is there somebody else? Maybe I didn't see your hand. There's another. Preacher, here's my hand. I need to know. Here's what I'm going to do. With heads bowed and eyes closed, uh, Georgette and uh, Kim, I want you both up here with a Bible. Jay, grab your Bible. Robert, find the Bible. Zachary, go hang out with Robert and Jay. Make sure they stay straight. I know there were two females who raised your hand. And here's how we're going to do this. I want everyone just to stand so that those that might be sitting around can get out easily. If you're a lady and you want to know more about this thing of salvation, if you're a young person, these two ladies over here and others would be glad to help. I've got some guys right here that would be glad to help. It's not, there's no high pressure. If you raised your hand and you need to know, I want you to slip out and come talk to them and let them help you. Preach, I'm not sure. I need to know. Could be the reason you feel like you need to know today is because 
God's telling you bad times are getting ready to come. You need to know right now.
thank you it was in 90, 1996 her son Jeff had passed and that's no parent should have to bury their child there's, there's people in here that have been through that in 2009 she lost her mother and 2008 for her mother and Slug her husband passed in 2009 we were singing this song in choir and uh, she was standing right there at the edge and we were just singing the chorus and I'll never forget her just belting this out just leading right into this verse some folk have been through some awful awful hard pain sorry sing, sing a little bit about that there be no sorrow okay. no more burdens to bear yeah. no more sickness no pain yep. no more pain With all 